yes very good afternoon i think all are safe at your home it is a very uh, good time to learn through this app this uh, today we are going to discuss about the nde process nde subject up to now we have discussed about the five units that five units are one is the uh, first unit related to the uh, nde process introduction about the ndt and radiography testing and second unit and third unit fourth unit fifth unit these are all the units uh, we have discussed about the different techniques to find out the defects in a material or component and structures different techniques we are we, we have discussed in the previous units now in this sixth unit and last unit it is nothing but a sixth unit in this last unit we are going to discuss about the how can we apply that techniques in the industries how can we select that particular process or particular method in the industrial applications industries is nothing but a, there are so many activities happen in the industries the industries are generally fabrication industries manufacturing industry and different types of industries are there depending upon the industries in every industry having uh, industries nothing but a, it in every industry have some components the components are fabricated in the different units different types of industries we have learned in the previous classes and uh, that different types of industries also uh, some casting foundries and uh, rolling industries and uh, forging industries and welding industries these are all are the industries we have classified these industries in the in the two types like uh, primary industries and the secondary industries are also we can say primary manufacturing process and secondary manufacturing process depending upon the manufacturing process there are different industries are also uh, uh, divided in a different uh, uh, classified into different ways like uh, fabrication industries and uh, this uh, manufacturing industries and some uh, uh chemical industries transportation industries like that today we are going to discuss about the 60 unit in the 60 unit in our syllabus point of view there are different types of industries listed here uh that uh, different types of industries like railways one is the first one is the railways railways is the combination of uh, uh, rails rails is nothing but tracks wheels of the bogies and engines springs at the bogies and brakes and different uh, mechanical parts involved in this uh, railways and uh, these are in this railways some uh, casting components are there casted components are there and uh, so many welded welding welding activities also there and forged components also involved in this railways and next one is the nuclear and the non nuclear industries like this nuclear and non nuclear industries comes under uh, to generation of power this uh, nuclear and non nuclear industries we have to take care about the nuclear ar we have to check it uh, thoroughly or periodically this nuclear and non nuclear industries because the, we are using here atomic energy to produce the power in the nuclear industries and non nuclear industries like ntpc thermal power stations uh, uh, we are using there then there is uh, so many boilers uh, generators and uh, uh, so many uh, turbines are there that uh, turbines also we have to check uh, periodically and next one is the chemical industries you know about the chemical industries and third fourth one is the aircraft and aerospace industries one of the important thing i want to discuss about this aircraft industries aircraft once it moves from the land to the uh, land uh, from the land 
if any problem occurs in the uh, it, it means uh, uh, about the land in the running uh, moving moving uh, state we cannot uh, rectify there is a very limited uh, chances to rectify the defect if the defect is major if defect happens it is very very difficult to rectify and also if uh, any accidents happens in this due to the defect uh, there is a pro problem with the there is a big loss of human lives so we have to again we have to check thoroughly about this uh, aircraft industries uh, and aerospace industries and next one is the automotive industries automotive industries you know about the automotive industries like uh, uh, this uh, buses transportation industries like buses and uh, cars bikes and some other uh, moving uh, moving with the uh, engine with the help of the engines uh, that all, all are comes under automotive industries and next one is the petrochemical industries this petrochemical industries to extract the crude oil from the or to extract the gas from the uh, petrochemical gas lpg gas low uh, lpg gas uh, or uh, uh, any other gases uh, we, uh, if we if we extract from the offshore means in the sea in between in the sea itself that is called as the after offshore industries which is uh, uh, which is placed on the shore itself it is called as a uh, onshore uh, petroleum um, industry and it is also called as a rigs uh, in the east godavari and krishna basin so many rigs are there some are uh, placed in the sea by in our bay of bengal and some are placed on the earth itself it is nearby amlapuram and uh, uh, that areas and the next one is the coal mining industries and coming to the petroleum industries and petroleum to produce the petroleum uh, and uh, petroleum products like uh, kerosene diesel tar and some other products uh, that uh, that industries are like uh, our hpcl bpcl and iocl and next one is the coal mining industries coal mining industries is mining is nothing but digging that uh, coal digging industries it is happened uh, mining is uh, two types one is the up, uh, above the ground level and uh, below the ground level if it is happened in the below the ground level that is comes under uh, underground mining process there's a generally this coals available in the underground mining process in our in tamil nadu and uh, tamil nadu area uh, it means sorry that uh, telangana area there are two there are so many coal mines are there like sengareni mines and uh, godargani mines there are so, so many mines are there they are digging the coal uh, and uh, they are transporting the coal from the underground to the uh, that uh, above the ground level through the some vehicles if it, it is also very important to check periodically in the coal mining industry because if anything happens in the mining that means uh, in the underground itself it is very difficult to uh, rectify and uh, it is uh, possible to uh, it may be cause it may be a cause for the accident so this accident may cause uh, uh, for the human loss and uh, finally there is the nda of preservations preservations you know the preservations like boilers heat exchangers and uh, some vessels which are carrying uh, uh, hydrocarbons like petrol gas and cylinders our lpg gas uh, vessels are so uh, we are seeing in our vaishakhapatnam and casting industries like foundries and welded construction pro products also we will discuss about this uh, in this uh, unit okay uh, uh let me go forward in this uh, if you if you want to select any nde process or ndt technique ndt is different from the nde ndt is nothing but a non destructive testing and nde is a non destructive testing as well as the evaluation not only testing but also evaluation so if you want to select any ndt technique uh, uh, to in the industry you must know the uh, what is the uh, what type of nd detecting we have to select to find out the particular defect it means there are two things are there one the one thing is you have to know correct idea full ir full idea about uh, that ndt techniques 
and also we have to you must know the defect type what are the defect types if it is a welding you must know the welding weld, welding possible defects if it is a casting you must know the possible casting defects and if it is a hydrocarbon industries what are the possible defects occurs in the industry if it is a automobile industries what is the possible defects uh, will occur in the running itself so, so you must have some idea about the uh, possible uh, defects occurs in our, in that particular industry as well as the after finding out the possible defects you have to find out the perfect ndt method to find out the defect so i think uh, it is better to remind the previous units briefly in this purpose uh, i already discussed about this definition of ndt it is a what is ndt just a brief discussion it is just i want to skip these slides one by one very uh, fastly so uh, this uh, uh, this is definition of entity is nothing but this is the non invasive technique to determine the integrity of the material or component or structure there are three steps in this uh, definition one is the non invasive technique and the two, the second one is the determine the integrity for what material component and structure there are three steps three points in, involved in this definition one is the non invasive what is non invasive non invasive means invasive is nothing but a destructive non invasive is nothing but a non destructive techniques we are using here non without any destruction we are going to test the material we have decided that uh, we are going to uh, test the material without any destruction for what for what purpose we are going to disc um, uh, test the material to determine the integrity to determine the integrity means to determine the quality of the quality of what the third one is a uh, quality of product quality of the component quality of the structure these are the three things we are going to test without any destruction with we are going to test the quality of the uh, quality of the product without any destruction that is the definition it is very easy to remember that is the first thing you, do, you divide this definition into three stages one is the it is a non invasive technique second one is the to determine the quality and third one is the to de quality of what material component and structure these three st three st points you have to remember this is the definition of the ndt and the next one is the for what for what are the uses to find out uh, by using this NDT methods to find out the plus plus and uh, plus is nothing but a cracks cracks and detection and evaluation uh, how much the uh, crack depth uh, crack severity also we can identify by in the figure we can see that there is a crack shaft uh, there is a small crack occurs at the surface of the material uh, if it is a uh, uh, it means repairable it is okay if it is not repairable repairable means if it is a uh, the depth of the flaw is a uh, uh, minimum of uh, 1 mm or uh, 1.5 mm we can repair it uh, depending upon the thickness of this uh, uh, crankshaft uh, if it is uh, the depth is more uh, this it is uh, uh, it is not suggested to use for the pro for the applications and next one is the leak detection Leak detection means it is generally used to find out the leaks in the tanks like petrochemical tanks, petroleum tanks, milk tanks and, uh, and kerosene carrying tanks. These are all the tanks we are going to, uh, boilers also we are going to test this leak test. And second, third one is the location determination. Location determination in ships, submarines and aeroplanes, we are using a radar to find out the location. Mm, to uh, to find out the detection by using the ultrasounds in submarines they are using the ultrasound to find out the depth of the sea and also uh, in the ships also they are using the this ultrasounds and dimensional measurement and dimensional measurement it is a visual inspection dimensional measurement is also one of the uh, non to comes under now one of the non to testing and structural and microstructural characteristics i want to tell you one thing microstructure plays an important role about on the quality of a any component if the microstructure is very fine nowadays uh, the all the uh, 
um, uh, materials are fabricated all the materials are fabricated in the nano uh, nano sizes nano sizes means uh, with the help of the nano particles because uh, if the size reduces or the uh, grain, grain size reduces the strength of the material increases uh, it not only strength the property of the materials increases so microgel characterization is also one of the important parameter to find out the defect and in a third uh, next one is the uh, estimation of mechanical and physical property generally this to find out the mechanical and physical property generally we are using some uh, uh, like uh, what um, like uh, utm universal testing mission and uh, yeah uh, it this uh, izod sharpie test uh, to find out the impact strength to find out the strength you are using a um, universal testing to find out the hardness we are using that uh, uh, hardness testing missions but uh, with the help of the nde methods also we can find out the mechanical and physical properties and also ne next one is a very important thing stress strain dynamic response and the stress strain dynamic response in this uh, we can say that uh, stress strain uh, it is it is difficult to find out with the non destructive testing but there is a equipment called uh, there is a equipment called XRD. With the XRD, we can find out without any destruction, we can find out the stress and strain of the material. And finally, there is a one, there is one another thing that is nothing but a um, material shortening the chemical composition determination. By chemical composition, there is a spectrometers are there. Uh, there is a hand type spectrometers are there. We can find out the uh, chemical composition because depending upon the chemical composition we can shorting of the material these are the uses of the some uses of the non destructive testing why non destructive testing because some so many uh, uh, these uh, pieces and products are very precious and uh, after the testing also we can reuse that uh, um, material at the component uh, in service testing is also uh, possible in the quality control department majorly nowadays they are using this non destructive testing these are the some uses of uh, some um, it means uh, non destructive testing uh, and uh, next one is the uh, uh, when are non de nde methods used eppudu when are non destructive testing means used means to assess the product development in product development we are using the non destructive testing uh, to screen or short incoming materials, incoming materials, some entering the material will coming with the different chemical composition. Uh, to select our required chemical composition uh, to screening or shortening the screening uh, this uh, incoming materials and uh, improve the control of manufacturing process. Manufacturing process uh, plays uh, an important role in the pro final quality of the product. So. Uh, this NDT methods uh, give some guidelines to uh, for the manufacturing process and uh, uh, in the heat treatment process after some some cases uh, we're going to test them uh, we're going to process the material um, through the heat heating uh, to improve the mechanical properties in the heat heating process also they are giving some uh, this NDA gives some um, um, it guides how to heat it, the material and the next one is the proper assembly assembly uh, uh, ND, through entity process we can uh, test the material it is a, whether it is a proper assembly or not and uh, in service damage if, if any, any service damage the damages are there uh, we can test with the uh, this uh, entity methods uh, and uh, next one is the classification coming to the classification of entity methods entity methods are classified into two categories and detection uh, of surface plus and uh, detection of internal plus so these are the two types of classification one is that to find out the surface plus and to find out the internal plus to, to find out the surface plus, visible inspection magnetic particle inspection and fluorescent dipenetrate inspection this fluorescent dipenetrate inspection are also called as a are also called as a uh, liquid penetration inspection because we here we are using a fluorescent dye to check the uh, defect uh, perfectly we are using a fluorescent dye. that's why it is called as a fluorescent dye penetrate inspection next one is that uh, to find out the internal flaws internal flaws means uh, under the surface of the material under the surface of the material we cannot uh, identify with the with our naked eye and, I, and, uh, and also 
above the uh, technique, surface technique, technique. That purpose we are using here radiography, ultrasonic testing, and eddy current testing. These are the three st three testing methods we are using to find out the defects. This is this is also comes under uh, internal plus internal to uh, find out the internal plus. This is the second classification. These three techniques are used to find out the internal plus. And next one is the first thing. What we have discussed in this one is the visual inspection. Simply we can say visual. Visual it means by with the naked eye. With the naked eye we are going to test. It is, it is possible only with the experience. Experience only we can find out the defect. If it is a very big crack or big flower, big uh, uh, porosity, porosity is there and uh, surface defects are there. Uh, we can say, simply say it is a defective material. If it is very small flaw and uh, some other uh, defects, uh, material defects, it is very difficult to uh, say it is a defect. Only an experienced person can only inspect this, uh, only give the, uh, uh, do the evaluation for in this uh, process. Generally, for uh, internal uh, parts, like in this uh, figure, we can say in this is uh, aeronautic energy, some uh, uh, turbine, uh, turbo fan is there. Uh, to find out the internal uh, flaws or any internal defects present in this uh, uh, area he, he is using some fibroscopes fibroscopes is and boroscopes magnifying glasses and mirrors generally wearing these are the equipment used to find out this in this visual inspection and also and uh, to find out the defects in the large tanks and vessels and rear rail tanks and cars and uh, this type of uh, uh, law, uh, heavy heavy uh, heavy length equipments uh, we have used uh, we have uh, we are going to use a portable video inspection unit with the gm allows in the inspection areas and also if if the meet, if it is a uh, very high areas high areas like uh, uh, pressure vessels and uh, towers uh, if you want to find out the defects at the at that particular area there are some robot cruels are there, uh, cru uh, cruels are there uh, to permit the observation of hazardous to tight areas such as air ducts, reactors, and pipelines. This is about the visual inspection. And the next one is the MPT. MPT is nothing but a magnetic particle testing. Magnetic particle by the use of magnetization principle, we are going to test the material every magnet we are we know that there is a two poles one is the north pole and the another one is the south pole it is generally this magnetic flux it means magnetic flux is nothing but a where the where the magnetic forces are high this magnetic flux is higher at the pole pole areas so um, pole areas if you cut a, any magnet if you cut uh, a, any magnet that uh, uh, magnet is converted into that particular area that cutted area is shifted is shifted is or it is converted into the opposite pole to the other end suppose it is a north north pole is one end uh, if you if you cut this uh, magnet uh, the end of the uh, the other end is becomes the south pole so if any crack observes at the magnet uh, magnet uh, it will be uh, the poles will be shifted from the opposite poles of the other ends. Uh, so in this test, it is a combination of two non-destructive testing methods. One is the magnetic flux leakage testing and the visual testing equipment. So here uh, I want to show a small video about the how to find out the defect. Here, uh, just you go through this uh, video. You want to explain about the how to do the magnetic testing. It is a portable magnetic testing equipment. You want to test that material that uh, uh, 
welding equipment or some scratches happened at that uh, particular slab is it audible okay if it is audible it is okay it is a welded uh, plates two weld uh, two plates are welded each other and uh, he placed the magnet on opposite sides of the weld and and he is spraying some uh, uh, iron powder ferrous powder on in between the holes and whatever the excess uh, uh, powder is there he is blowing out with the blower and uh, because he is uh, switch on that magnet uh, that portable equipment this uh, two ends of this uh, poles that uh, two poles are converted into one is the north pole and another one is the south pole see there is a one line of uh, one line after blowing also that uh, ferrous powder is attracted at that area because there is a magnet there is a north pole and south pole it means in between the two poles so that area becomes magnetized that is a crack area we can we can say and uh, this uh, i think uh, you have a good idea about the how to conduct a magnetic particle testing uh, in this magnetic test testing mainly we we have we must have some uh, one uh, portable inspection equipment uh, that is connected to the power uh, current or power or current uh, that is when you switch on that current uh, power when you switch on that power Uh, the two poles of this, uh, and it means the two ends of this uh, portable equipment become become magnetized. And uh, if you place that magnetized, magnetized means uh, that two ends, one is one one becomes the south pole, another becomes the north pole. If you place that the south pole and north pole in between that area of uh, where we want to check that that also becomes the magnetized. So. Uh, because of uh, so it be, it it is that uh, particular main bit uh, that area becomes the continuous magnet continuous magnet from the south pole to the north pole where the poles of the portable equipment is placed up to that if any crack in between that uh, area area means in between that poles two poles that uh, particular crack area converts uh, converts into that opposite sides of the nearest nearest possible near opposite side of the nearest possible pole it means suppose a north pole is there it becomes the opposite side of the south pole suppose the south pole is there it becomes the north pole you know, what I what i have uh, uh, discussed in the earlier slide this magnetic flux more magnetic flux is available at the edges are the poles poles only so more this uh, because of more magnetization forces acting at the poles this magnet uh, this uh, whatever the powder we are spraying there ferrous powder we are spraying there that uh, will attract at the area by depending upon that indication we can say there is a crack two testing procedure here there are some testing procedures and there one is the clean the surface of the material and first you have to demagnetize demagnetize the material uh, totally we have to demagnetize the total product and the next one is the 
uh, and uh, contrast dyes and white paint or dark particles we are using to find out the defect perfectly and next one is the magnetizing the object with the help of this portable equipment addition of magnetic particles here yeah, the magnetic particles are nothing but a uh, our here what what is our magnetic particles here yeah, the magnetic particles are ferrous powders and illumination during the inspection illumination is a flat generally fluorescent light generally we are using to find out this uh, uh defect uh find, find out correct uh yeah uh, yeah using using as a illumination purpose and that is a uv lamp and interpretation and finally that that is the important interpretation is nothing but a evaluation interpretation means uh, how much the depth how much, what is the length of the uh length of the uh, crack or flaw uh, we are going to uh, test through this indication. Finally, demagnetization because if you use that uh, magnetized product in the uh, as a component in any uh, any other uh, hmm, uh, equipment or machinery, there is there may be a problem with the uh, production process. So finally, demagnetization. First one is the demagnetization. Second uh, and last also completed with the demagnetization these are the steps involved in the mbi process i don't want to go in depth just i want to give the brief about this and what it and next one is the mba it is sensitive methods and surface defects fast and simple in in, in expansive direct visible inspection and can be used for painted objects surface preparation is not required as like as a liquid penetration test and other penetration tests liquid penetration test and the other penetration test so uh, surface preparation is not required and painted uh, painted objects uh, like painted objects also we can test it easily with the magnetic particle inspection and uh, it is a very sensitive method to uh, to find out the surface defects because uh, we can find out the defects up to the depth of the up to the depth uh, nearly 2 to 3 mm only uh, so it is a sensitive method and uh, and very fast and simple in expanse so only we, we want a uh, some ferrous powders so, so it is a fast and simple and direct and visible inspections and uh, disadvantages also there only good and ferromagnetic materials other plastics and uh, uh, ceramic material we cannot identify the defect with the magnetic particle testing only that should be our power uh, component should be ferromagnetic material and subsurface defects will not always be indicated only surface defect we can identify through this one subsurface defect we cannot identify it and one on one one and more one and the one of the important thing is the relative direction between the magnetic field and the defect lines is important so we have to test in the uh, different orientations it should be parallel perpendicular and uh, some inclination different inclination also we can uh, different angles also we can test we have to test uh, to find out the uh, different defects available in the uh, material so direction is very very important object must be demagnetized before and after the examination so one of the five important care we have to take is take care is a demagnetization process demagnetization process so it is very very important and this this is also comes under limitations of the magnetic particle inspection and next one is the simple things to find out the surface defects another one is the dye penetration testing it is also called the fluorescent dye penetration testing and because we are here you can see some figures like in the fluorescent light under the fluorescent light uh, so this uh, is, is also called as a fluorescent dye penetrate testing are also called as a liquid penetration inspection or the testing one of the most widely used non destructive evaluation it is a primary testing to find out the defect in the material okay lpa can be used lpi or L, liquid penetration inspection can be used to inspect almost any material provided its surface not to extend the rough porous okay here the one of the important we have to take care is the surface should be very very clean it, uh, it should be way it, it should be uh, uh, clear from dust dirt grease and other uh, paints and other other things so 
the surface preparation is very very important in this uh, dye penetration testing and material that are commonly inspect using this testing is aluminum copper steel titanium light glass many ceramic materials rubber and plastic every material we can test with this uh, dye penetration testing what are that uh, what are the uh, components we are using here one is the dye uh, it means uh, fluorescent uh, liquid another one is the uh, developer uh, another one is the developer and uh, uh, next to, next to one is the uh, after developer dye developer and next one is the cleaning these are the three operations are there one of the important thing we have to take care here is the cleaning of the surface surface is very very important here see, we can see the basic process of steps in the lpa surface preparation is very very important and penetration application penetrant application is nothing but a whatever the penetrant we have penetrant we have uh, and means what is uh, nothing but a dye, dye penetrant uh, we are going to apply on the material with by the spraying process and next one is the penetrant dwell time dwell time is nothing but we are allowing that uh, uh, penetrant to settle in the cracks or flaws or sometimes so that is nothing but the dwell time next one is the excess penetrant remote whatever the excess present penetrant present on the surface of the material we have to remove properly and remove uh, uh, properly next uh, next after thing there is a one another process is developer application developer is nothing but is like a simple layer uh, simply one of the powder which is extract the uh, dye fluorescent dye from the uh, internal internal uh, areas the internal areas is nothing but here the our internal areas are flask uh, from the flask it is extracting and uh, because it is a fluorescent color the developer is in white color uh, the developer converts its white color into the fluorescent color in that way we can identify there is a crack or flaw and then finish one another indication of the development and final inspection where the flaws are present where what is the width of the uh, width of the uh, flaw and the, what is the uh, other things we can we can also find out through this process finally we have another thing like a demagnetization process here also there is another process final process is there that is the clean the surface because this is fluorescent dye penetrant generally it is a chemical uh, if the chemical is present on the material there is a possibility for the corrosion so we have to avoid that corrosion uh, to avoid that corrosion the clean the surface properly i want to show a small video and related to this process uh, and uh, uh, he he want to he is explaining how to do the dye penetration testing this is the surface weld area First step is clean the test piece. What are the grease, dirt, dust, whatever it is, it is cleaned properly with the cloth by spraying that cleaner on the cloth. They properly cleaned the, all the surface. There are no spray on the liquid penetrant. It should be in the fluorescent color. Just is spraying very slightly on the surface of the weld joint. Generally, 30 to 15 minutes, we are allowing that material for uh penetrate into the flask uh, that is called as a dwell time after 10 minutes later this is delta time is over he is the uh, next uh, next after step is he want to remove the excess pres penetrant present on the surface of the uh, plate surface of the plate he is properly cleaned all the penetrant 
with uh, with the help of some cloths okay have to complete it uh, very fast it's properly cleaning see how he pay, he is taking care about the cleaning okay and he is properly cleaned then finally after properly cleaning finally he is cleaner also he is applying he is not he, he, this time he is not uh, applying that cleaner directly on the surface of the material this time he is applying the cleaner on the cloth and with the cloth he is cleaning the all the whatever the penetrated present on the material yes is it clear hmm. right he has completed his cleaning process and finally there is another step that is called as a developer he is going to apply the developer on the surface of the weld area very lightly he is applying the developer the purpose of the developer is it is extracting the the penetrant from the yes capillary action he is using the capillary by the capillary action that extract the penetrate from the flask see after developer the it becomes very white because the developer is in white color say by see see this there is a red areas present on the weld areas see here we can see the some uh, fluorescent color areas it means this area is a defective area in this process we can identify the defects this is nothing but a simple dye penetration testing process okay that is the dye penetration testing process next uh, what are the advantages coming to this advantages it is a method uh, has high sensitivity to small surface discontinuous and uh, large areas and large volumes of hot materials can be inspected penetrated materials and associated components also inspected this advantage only surface uh, cracks only we can identify material with the relatively non porous surface can be inspected and surface finish or rupture can affect the inspection cell so many other in disadvantages uh, also there and uh, next uh, type of uh, ndt method is the radiography testing radiography testing here we can see there is a uh, x ray uh, tube here x ray tube there is a filament and there is a target uh they are, they are producing some x-rays x-rays in this uh, through this uh, equipment so this is radiography testing uh, will conduct with the help of the radioact radioactive sources that is that uh, radioactive sources are either uh, gamma gamma rays and the x-rays this are uh, radioactive uh, ra uh, x-rays and gamma rays are also comes under electromagnetic waves electro what is electromagnetic waves actually um, uh, this is electromagnetic waves here we can see this picture is all are comes under electromagnetic waves like from the radio waves and microwaves infrared waves and visible light waves and ultraviolet waves x rays gamma rays these are all the rays are comes under electromagnetic waves depending upon the frequency of this uh, waves it is uh, uh it, it divided into radioactive waves and microwaves and like uh, like x and x and gamma rays also so here we can see uh, clearly uh, observe that radioactive at the frequency is very low frequency coming to the gamma rays it is a very high frequency in another way i uh, i want to tell you this radio in the intensity of the this uh, rays the intensity of this rays very low in the radioactive waves and very high in the gamma rays that's why 
uh, in the FM radio and uh, some other mobile uh, mobile uh, uh, this radiation does not affect immediately on the human bodies. But uh, this ultraviolet rays uh, and uh, X rays and gamma rays, it is uh, the frequency is much more higher than the radioactive waves. So it will be effect on the uh, human waves immediately. So we have to take care about this uh, radioactive testing. That is uh, safety precautions are very, very important. And this uh, radioactive waves, I want to give you a small uh, video also there. In the measuring tape, he is, he is examining the diameter of this pipe. And uh, he is placing uh, some uh, X ray films on that pipe. X ray films on that pipe, and uh, uh, that uh, X ray mission he placed opposite to the X ray film. That is the more important X-ray films. We have to place that X-ray mission opposite to the X-ray film. In between, our uh, uh, tested equipment should be placed. We start its radiation. See here, there is a imaginary animated uh, video. The X-rays are passing from the one edge to the another edge up to this X-ray film. See, he is interpreting the defects. By seeing this, we can we can observe some so many. See here, I want to prevent this one. See here, so many defects we can observe in this uh, 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 weld area. There is uh, so many cracks and uh, so many, uh, this, uh, this is called as a blow hole and pin holes and some other uh, defective areas we can observe in the weld areas. So through this X-ray, we can identify the internal defect in the weld areas. By surface, uh, surface it may be may very good, but uh, uh, internal uh, internal part of this weld, uh, there is a unfilling areas and uh, this uh, uh, some slag inclusions and uh, some porosity, some cracks uh, is also we can observe through this radiographic testing. Okay, next one is the ultrasonic testing. This ultrasonic testing is one of the important things here. We are using the ultrasounds which are not audible to the human body. That ultrasound is a high frequency sound wave transmitted into a material to detect the imperfection to locate the changes in the material properties. Material properties, and it means if it any uh, holes in any unwanted materials are there, uh, any obstructions are there, uh, we can identify with the ultrasound inspection. The most common use of ultrasonic testing technique is pulse echo technique we are using here. Here also one another video is there. Just to go through this video. The principle here we are explaining in any uh, workpiece, any material that uh, atoms in the workpiece once you They should go through this video. If you send a sound waves through that material, it passes through the atoms and it goes to the end and it reverses back. So,
there is if there is a cavity that uh, sound waves reflected from that area so what can we understand from this uh, video if sound waves moves from one area to another way there must be a one conductor in air there are so many atoms are there because the uh, in air the may uh, the sounds are moving from one area to the another area if any obstruction like in hill area if you uh, shout loudly uh, that uh, your sound will uh, come back as a echo and the same sound will uh, you will be listen after some time It is a casted object. He want to test that casted object, green cylinder. He want to test that uh, any defect in that particular area. It is called as a probe. It is uh, uh, transmitting some sound waves. To avoid the air gaps, we are using some. Uh, See how he plays the probe on the surface of the object. This gel is useful to avoid the air gaps between the probe and the material. That is the only purpose of this gel. See here that is an animated photo in the surface. One there is a cavity at that area. From that cavity, the sound it comes back at 130 millimeters area. It goes back and it is received the received by the transducer. And second one is there is the 87 millimeters area. There is another obstruction is there. From that obstruction, that echoes are going back. Here we can see the how uh, NDT method, this ultrasonic testing method is useful in a railways. This all the wheel axis also all are supposed to bear this fatigue loads. So I have to see it properly. You are applying some gel in the internal area of the axle that is called the bore, bore area. It is a probe. 
you can observe that there is a scale like that from that scale marks you can identify we can identify that uh, the depth of the defect also in this axel and he is examined in the matter see this uh, this is nothing but a drill hole there is a crack at the bottom This is the procedure to conduct uh, uh, ultrasonic testing in the railway waves. And next one is the eddy current testing. Electrical currents are generated in the conductor metal by an induced alternate magnetic field. Eddy current is nothing but a secondary current. When you place uh, uh, one material, when you place a material on the surface, when you place a conductor in the uh, conducting electromagnetic field, there will be a Secondary magnetic field will induce. So through this principle, uh, we are going to test this eddy current testing. Okay, eddy current instrument is like this. There is a voltmeter coil, and uh, current a uh, magnetic field will be induced at that uh, in between uh, in the perpendicular direction, in perpendicular direction to the magnetic uh, coil. And if you place a, a conductive material in the magnetic field. Uh, that eddy current in the perpendicular direction it means the secondary current will induce in the uh, perpendicular direction this uh, based on this if any obstruction in any obstruction in this area or any obstruction in this material at this eddy current in in the in the area of eddy current there is a loss of current uh, passes through this um, through this area in based on this principle uh, we are using uh, we are using this eddy current test to uh, to find out the flaws on the surface of the material uh, surface or uh, internal uh, internal surface of the materials. Okay. Okay. Advantage sensitive to small cracks and other defects. Defect surface are near the surface defect. Inspection gives immediate result. Equipment is very portable. Methods can be used much more than the flaw detection minimum part of preparation and uh, only conductive materials can be inspected of the limitations and disadvantage point of view conductive materials only uh, inspected and skills and training required to more inst intensive than another technique surface finish and roughness may be in and repaired and reference standards need to be set up depth of penetration is limited and the subsurface inspection is also possible with this uh, type of eddy current this is the five tests we are going to discuss we have discussed in the previous classes so uh, for common applications inspections of raw materials and inspections of secondary processing equipment what are the secondary processing uh, processing surface this is the primary raw material like forging, castings, extrusions. These are all are comes under primary manufacturing process. And the secondary manufacturing process, machining, welding, grinding, heat treating, plating. These are all are comes under secondary manufacturing process. This NDT process is also used to find out the defects uh, in the primary manufacturing process as well as the secondary manufacturing process. And uh, in, in service damage also we can identify through this process. So suppose in the uh, offshore uh, rigs, uh, offshore uh, petroleum industries, and uh, so in the pipelines there is a possibility of due to the corrosion, erosion, wear, heat damage, cracking. Also find out with the uh, with this NDT methods. This uh, what is the role of non to testings in industries so what is the role of non to test up to now we have discussed about the different non to testing methods and uh, in this industry uh, what is the role verification of design quality design quality also we can verify with the help of the non to testing 
verification of design quality certification of manufacturing process manufactured product, products and assessment of product degradation effective repair and replacement during the service. these are the some some important roles playing the, by the non destructive testing and what are the tests so it is means visual inspection ultrasonic testing eddy current testing magnetic particle testing radiographic testing what we discussed up to now okay about, uh, about this uh, first topic rails what are the important major or co major components in the railways are rails wheels axles bearings welded rail joints and and brides these are all are some components in the railways rails rails is nothing but a tracks wheels you know the wheels axles so see here the some of the defects uh, here the some of the defects like uh, uh, this pipe here the due, due to the forging process there is a um, uh, pipe pipe in the rail pipe means so there is a gap happened at the in between the area this is the one of the defects and next one is the at the whole area there is a, because of high uh, highly fatigue loads acting on this uh, rails uh, there is a possible to crack formation at this uh, area after this uh, uh, there is a due to the extension of this crack there is a possible to total uh, failure of this rail and next one is the uh, removal of some uh, part on the rail and also uh this is a horizontal split horizontal split is happened at this area and a defective welds due to the uh, due to defective welds there is a possible of failure at the rail rail uh, rails and also this is a corroded rail because it is in the, it is in the open atmosphere these are the some defects in the way rail areas what type of inspections we are, we are going to test in the visible inspection see here there is a uh some uh defect we can observe on the rail it is a by, by naked eye we can uh, we can observe this this type of defects so uh, to find out the internal defects in the rails to find out the internal cracks on the rails here we are conducting the ultrasonic testing and was in the coming to the wheels the railway wheels it is a cast object it is a one a single flanged rail wheel and a double flanged uh, wheels and to find out the defects in this wheels and rails also we are going to test ultrasonic inspection magnetic particle inspection radiographic testing and thermography testing is also we are going to test for this uh, rails and next one is the pressure vessels coming to the next topic so i think you you understand that what are the problem possible problems occurs in the railways railways are not a, railways includes uh, once again i want to repeat this thing mm, uh, railway components include rails wheels axles bearings welded joints so rails are having some problems at the whole areas and drill areas and at the middle of the uh, rail and the wheels also having because it is a casted product there is a possibility of casting defects and the axles uh, here we can we have observed through this uh, video ultrasonic testing there is a cracks occurs in the uh, axle areas and bearing areas so one out of the one out of the bearing areas uh, will uh, uh, we can also test with the ndt process and welded joints welding defects also if you if you know this welding jo welding defects you can clearly identify the welding defects through this uh, ndt methods and uh, also we have we have done this this one and next thing is the uh, next thing is the pressure vessels coming to the pressure vessels the next topic is the pressure vessels non destructive testing of pressure vessels and non destructive test related to identify the presence of those defects and imperfections and discontinuities in the finished product which impair the performance of the level what are the pressure vessels here we can see the pressure vessel here the, there is a in the chemical industry based by seeing this this is the image of the chemical industry we can clearly observe that there is a chemical industry involves uh, so many pipelines and uh, so many uh, towers and uh, uh, chimneys is also called as a chimneys and boilers and uh, tanks these are all are involved and also heat exchangers there is also present in this uh, total industry so these are all our, uh, these are all our uh, equipment pressure vessels heat exchangers and uh, boilers uh, pipelines all the things are we are using uh in the chemical industry petroleum industry and uh, nuclear and power industry also 
so uh, this is the one of the pressure vessel this is the one of the pressure vessel in this pressure vessel we can clearly uh, see that there is a, so many nozzles are there long uh, circular and nozzle no, no, longitudinal uh, no, nozzles are there and walls are there and uh, these are all uh, walls and nozzles are uh, connected to this vessel with the some welding jo welded joints and this pressure vessel vessel is also fabricated with the rolling operation and this ends of the pressure vessel is also fabricated uh, but joined by a weld welding so here we have to test the radiographic testing at the welded areas where the welded areas are there and uh, uh, this rolling operation in the by uh, simultaneously we are going to test the uh, when the because it is a rolling rolling process rolling process there is a possibility of internal defects as well as the external cracks also uh, so here i have uh, given some uh, names like rt rt is nothing but radiographic testing here uh, in the welding areas radiographic testing generally we are going to ca conduct it is uh, nothing but a pt a dye penetration testing penetration testing at the uh, joint of nozzles and also pt and ut also uh, ultrasonic testing also we are going to testing mpt magnetic particle testing also we are going to testing here the nozzle one nozzle two ultrasonic some different types of tests you know, we will go to conduct in the pressure vessels so pressure vessels uh, is nothing but a pressure vessel is nothing but a, it is a nothing nothing but a some small vessel this vessel is uh, is uh, possible to use in the chemical industry nuclear power plants and uh, and whatever the uh, other industries uh, and transport industries petroleum kerosene naphthalene the, the, which are transported through the lorries there is uh, some big tanks are there they also there the big tanks are also like this these are all the th tests we are going to test on the pressure vessel this is the one of the important thing nowadays and one is the another one is the heat exchangers heat exchangers you know there are so heat exchangers are fabricated with a different number of pipes so everywhere in the every pipe there is a there is a possibility of some cracks so heat exchanger these are examined during the fabrication of control of process of fabrication during the use of prevention of failure or initial replacement usually following techniques are used like eddy current testing because it is a it is it is fabricated with the ferrous material and ultrasonic testing and leak test is also one of the important because so many uh, fluids are flowing through this heat exchanger so leak test is very very important visual examination on the surface is also conducted in the heat exchangers and uh, see here there is a one chart like uh, pressure vessels and boilers a component that form, form component is here the component is pressure vessels and boilers a defects are general a possible occurs a leak penetration test a leak penet a leak of penetrants a lack of fusion lack of penetration lack of fusion it means lack of penetration lack of fusion cavities cracks porosity these are all are comes in the welding, welding areas corrosion due to the uh, due to this uh, uh, material exposed to the open atmosphere there is a possibility of corrosion pitting or pitting is also comes under corrosion challenge uh, change in wall thickness due to the corrosion there is a possibility of change in wall thickness hydrogen embrittlement because it is uh, uh, these pressure vessels are uh, uh, stored uh, st store some uh, carbohydrates carbohydrates so these carbohydrates are morally Mm, mm, it is uh, generally it is used uh, it it, pro it promotes the corrosion process so hydrogen embrittlement uh, so hydrogen embrittlement is nothing but if the hydrogen is there there in the material uh, that hydrogen reacts with the steel and hydrogen uh, enters in the in between the grain boundaries there is a possibility of increasing the brittleness of the material when it is exposed to the little when it is exposed to the little impact the impact load there is a possibility of some um, cracks occur at the particular embrittled area this one is the stress corrosion because so many stresses are acting on this material and hydro thermal fatigue 
go crack, creep, deterioration. What are the tests we are going to test? Radiographic test, ultrasonic test, magnetic particle test, liquid penetration. All the five tests so we have to conduct to find out the defects in the pressure vessels and heat exchangers. General corrosion, erosion, pitting, and the support plate pitting, stress corrosion, cracking, and mechanical. No need. To, I think no need to explain above. Uh, uh, in the uh, above uh, line also there is a corrosion uh, erosion pitting and all the things i have explained here we, because heat exchangers are uh, ferrous materials eddy current testing generally we are conducting ultrasonic testing and helium leak test uh, because uh, here here uh, heat exchangers are uh, uh, helium is a uh, argon uh, uh, it, it is a uh, it, it, it is used to find, uh, 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 conduct the leak test, visual examination, magnetic flux leakage testing, and storage tanks. And uh, above uh, ground and underground uh, build tanks, including large tanks used in the petrochemical industry. It is storage tanks that comes under uh, transportation tanks, uh, kerosene transportation, petroleum transportation, milk transportation. Whatever the tanks are there, that all the tanks are comes under storage tanks, and also petrochemical petro petro industry to store the um, naphthalene, to store the uh, ammonia in the uh, what it is called uh, um, fertilizers. Fertilizers they are storing some ammonia uh, in the uh, storage tanks. These are all are comes under storage tank. Generally, because all the things are uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, all the things are all the storage tanks are uh, uh, stores some uh, carbohydrate and carbohydrates like uh, it means uh, uh, petro petrochemicals like corrosion it, it is possible to defect like corrosion and uh, degradation of wall thickness and uh, welding defects radiographic testing ultrasonic testing visual examination magnetic flux leakage testing and uh, some are the other tests also we are going to test the pipes and pipes come into metallic and composite intracranular stress corrosion cracking pitting microbiology initiated cracking corrosion these are all the uh, defects we have studied in the production technology subject that's why i have not given that much of importance to explain all these defects so i am concentrating here i am concentrating the commonly used entity methods so for this test so we are using the ultrasonic and surface breaking cracks radiography acoustic emission and visual checking is generally we are using and then coming to the next one is the aircraft testing structural deterioration corrosion fatigue fabrication defects and these are the some problems will occur in the aircraft see here during the manufacturing process also we are going to test to detect the damage during the operation of the in manufacturing process in the operation of uh, operation time also we are going to test the um, aircraft uh, with the entity methods we generally the fatigue crack that started at the site of lightning strike is shown below see here there is a, some images we can see there is a uh, because the lightning will occur in the uh, will uh, will occur in the uh, uh, it means uh, sky in the transportation in the move in the transportation of moving of this aircraft if the lightning uh, touches the uh, aircraft there is a there is formation of some cracks on the surface so these cracks will cause a become will become a big problem in the uh, if you are not corrected um, big problem if you are not corrected and next one is this is the aeroplane the what are the forces acting on the aeroplane also we can see that impact forces hoop stress and uh, hoop stress is the uh, longitudinal stress longitudinal stress and upper skin lower skin steer stress impact stress bending impact bending and torsion these are all the forces acting on your aeroplane so we have to check it based on this impact strength uh, uh, we, have, we have to test this whether it is a any shear stress is there whether it is a, uh, you have to test whether it is any cracks are occurring at this area and uh, uh, this hoop stress and the impact stress these are all the uh, based on the stresses acting on the on this uh, aeroplane mm, we are going to test the non to we are going to select different types of non to testing and next one is the refineries offshore and onshore 
offshore refiners you can see this offshore is placed in the in between in the sea itself in onshore it is a place in the onshore in on the ground so in the offshore there is what is the general problem occurs in the offshore only the problem is major problem is a corrosion and the next one is the, in the onshore onshore by seeing this image you can observe that so many pipelines is here so many pipelines so this onshore whatever the petroleum industry is there this is are full of pipes and tanks and uh, uh, this what are the test coming to the testing point of view ultrasonic mills are also used to as various weld joints because all the pipes are joined with the welding procedure and also uh, various uh, welding procedure so ultrasonic testing is used to find out the defects in the weld areas that ultrasonic scan, testing procedures are two three types one is the a scan b scan and c scan methods and magnetic particle inspection visual examination and uh, uh, and also eddy current testing radiographic testing magnetic particle testing are also we have we can conduct on the offshore and the petroleum products uh, one thing i want to tell you that uh, depending upon the uh, defects possible defects occurs on the particular industry only we will go to select that uh, different types of entity methods and uh, coal mining industry coming to the coal mining industry uh, and the visual examination uh, visual examination to de detect the gross surface defects magnetic particle inspection liquid penetration inspection eddy current testing and the radiography testing we are using to in the coal mining finally i want to tell you i want to uh, give you a small brief about the defects uh, already i think all of you aware of this uh, defects this is the first first image is the casting defects this is the Mm, uh, it means a zoomed part of the casting defect. What are the casting defects? Blow holes. Blow holes will occur at the surface area as well as the internal area. So uh, I want to ask a, uh, one simple question. What are the tests you uh, we have to conduct to find out the defects? To find out the surface defects, uh, we have to. Uh, if you conduct the visual examination or MPT, you can you can find out the blow holes on the surface area. Suppose it is an internal defect, so you you must uh, select the uh, radiographic testing or the ultrasonic testing. And uh, next one is the misruns and uh, shift mis mismatch and drops, swells, metal penetrations, cold shirts and hot tears, shinkes, wash and cuts, slags, inclusion. Slag inclusions also find out through the uh, radiographic testing. Remaining all are above. Uh, defects uh, we can find out with the visual examination uh, is it clear now casting defect this is about the cast defects. coming to the welding defects here you can see there is a crack at the uh, crack crack at the neck of the weld and uh, there is a unfilling areas and uh, some inclusions also there and uh, some porosity is there some crack in between the area and uh, slag inclusions also there and uh, 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 this is the transfer crack and the lack of root fusion and uh, solidification crack is also done. Uh, improper solidification also possible some cracks and uh, crater cracks. So these are all our cracks we can identify through the NDT technique. So some uh, some some cracks we can some defects we can identify with the visual examination. But majorly with the radiographic testing we are going to test we are going to identify the defects in the wells okay any questions any questions related to this topic if you have any question just you ping me uh, in the whatsapp as well as the mail and uh, this is a very important topic and uh, uh, one more thing i want to tell you it is a very simple topic uh, the major questions uh, uh, possible questions comes from this uh, unit is uh, what are the tests conduct in the railways? What are the tests conduct in the aeronautical industries? What are the tests NDT test conducts in the uh, chemical industries? What are the major tests? What major possible defects and what are the major possible tests we are going to test? Uh, we are using uh, this NDT methods. Uh, that like that some some simple questions they will ask. Uh, you can get a yes, full marks. Okay. Good luck for for your exam and uh, do the best. Thank you.